Hello and welcome to Galactic Goddess podcast and show. I'm your host, Rod Amelia, and today we're going to talk all about relationships and rebound. And I have an expert in the field of relationships and many other things, a best-selling author, Barry. Welcome. Hi, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. So wonderful to have you. Please tell us a little bit about you and the work you do. Okay. So my formal introduction, at least the one that today is current, because it does shift, yeah. <laughs> is, 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 that, is that I'm a best-selling author, an inspirational speaker, and I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And mm. that's what drives my work. It's why I help women create balance in love, life, and business. It's why I'm driven this way because of the work that's been in me for the last dozen years. I've been on this mm. path for quite a while. Oh, beautiful. I love that. How did you come into that compassion and love for the divine feminine? Well, to be honest, it was because I had messed up most of my relationships up until about 12 years ago. Mm, that's um, a good way to learn. Oh, I've, I've learned by mistakes more than once. Mm -hmm. um, Hello. And Frank, right. And after I went through the same experience three times in different relationships where my partner um, and I had this really, it's like I had all these skills at that point. I mean, I've got, I've got a background in so many things I've done, but I still kept messing up my love life. Mm. And the biggest thing I realized looking back was, they were more in charge than I was. In terms, they were in the masculine and the driving. They were driving the relationship. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I was advocating. Mm -hmm. and I knew I knew how to shift it, but I didn't really know how to do it without what I thought would be hurting them. Mm. And that question or questioning led me, thankfully, very quickly into a whole immersion into the masculine and feminine conversation and mm -hmm. the polarity discussion and the practical embodiment of that for myself. And when I really got into the masculine and feminine work, when I finally got clear about who I was as a masculine man, because that mm -hmm. wasn't what I was doing, mm. I, saw, I saw women in the feminine so powerfully, I was in worship of that. I was so oh. in awe of what, because I hadn't seen women really own that before. I see women like mm -hmm. very beautiful, mm -hmm. but when they're feminine, it transcended. It was, I saw the beauty, the power, the magnificence, and the majesty of women when they claim and own the feminine. That was, was it floored me. I mean, it was put me on my knees in, in mm. worship. So mm. from there on, I've been in that, that place where I love seeing women do that and I help women mm. remember that for themselves so I yeah. can enjoy that place. That's so important and such a gift. You know, there's nothing I admire more than seeing uh, a divine masculine stepping into his true purpose. And, you know, as masculine, it's been very challenging, I'm sure, because our society tells you to just see women in a certain light, to that they're only, you know your trophy or your, you know, right. whatever, whatever those um, derogatory things are rather than um, really emb embodying the essence of the feminine or seeing the value. But, but see, this is a perfect example of when a divine masculine embodies himself. He is then able to mirror that and to see that in the feminine and then also be able to receive that. I'd love you to speak on the masculine perspective in case any men are listening or advice <laughs> for them of how they can start to heal and honor themselves. Okay. That's a, that's a like, big like question. A <laughs> right. Well, let me start Power. on this angle. But, Cause when you were talking, something that came up that was part of this for me too, because again, the relationships I had before is that we have a culture where women have been trained to act like men in the business world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and in the business world, it's a very competitive energy. Mm -hmm. And so that also translates because most people don't disengage when they come out of work. Mm -hmm. They end up doing the same thing in dating. So it's a, it's a competitive field and wow. it's not competing. It's not competing for the prize, like men competing against each other, although it kind of does work that way. Mm -hmm. It's men and women competing with each other mm -hmm. because a lot of women haven't owned and remembered their feminine heart. Mm -hmm. and so that's one of the challenges is that one of the things I do with women in my work from being a masculine man is I embody the masculine in a way mm -hmm. that helps them realize they don't need to take that space up they can let it go and step into yeah. the feminine and that's the work for men really is we need to as men because the thing is let me sign by this way mm -hmm. the world also for men has been a macho driven way of doing things mm -hmm. and the macho was, was grabbing, taking, achieving making it happen mm -hmm. my way the highway and so for women, that was very hard to be around because yes, women were treated like trophies. They were the prize. Mm -hmm. But when we're in a masculine, the women still are something we desire and yearn for, but it's from a place of really deep respect and mm -hmm. embracing the fact that when women are in the feminine, we can really hold a space for that. Mm 
Mm. And it's it's a beautiful synergy, like the yin and yang. It fits together beautifully. It really does. I think that's the one thing I hear a lot from women is they're longing for longing to be able to relax into their feminine you know yes. the longing to be able to relax and i i come from a background in entertainment um you know from modeling to producing to directing and you know working in the field was very intense to work in mm -hmm. as a producer um i you know it's like the energy was like i had to toughen up put on my armor and go 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 um but but then I had to learn how to also receive as well. And I was very frustrated because it was like giving, going, giving, going, and then I needed to receive as well. So it's it's such right. an important, you know, thing for women to know that they can relax into their femininity and that <clears throat> I think the deepest desire for many women that I work with and talk to is yes, to feel loved, to feel appreciated, to feel back into her feminine heart but to know that it's safe because i think a lot of times women feel armored maybe the same way men do because they feel well you know you can't hold me the way i need to be held like i'm i want to surrender to that masculine force and energy and love but i don't know if it's safe because of these right mind games and all of the all of the silly ways that our culture portrays relationships and like you said the competitiveness like we don't want to compete you know i i don't think the feminine wants to compete we you know i think women want to be heard and understood yes. we really want to be heard we want to be loved for who we are when we can come to feeling when we feel accepted and loved by masculine then, then we can be like the flower and open and bloom but I think trust is a big part because so many people have been very hurt by the opposite sex. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause what you said to that is, is a work you've come up with me as well in that same place is trust. Mm. You know, for one thing is, you know, the, cause the, cause the competitive energy is a masculine drive. It's, it's competing for the goal. So mm -hmm. when women are competing as well, they're in the masculine, which is out of alignment. Mm -hmm. The feminine energy is about bringing together and collaborating. Yeah. So it's an inclusive energy. And so when women are the feminine, there is no competition. No. So, and, and if we talk about, you know, soulmates and twin flames, mm -hmm. which I have a whole different agenda about, um, mm -hmm. there is no competition because the one you want is the one that's meant for you, not for anybody else. So there's no competition. That's so true. There's a saying, um, what's meant for me will be for me. You know, mm -hmm. what's meant for me will be for me. Like I don't have to fight it out with, and you know, this whole thing about, women thinking they need to go and fight another woman um no if, if your beloved is for you your beloved is for you if you have to right. duke it out with another woman over your divine masculine i don't think he's for you i don't think he's ready for anyone because uh, uh you know divine masculine wouldn't put a woman in that position to right. fight it out and you know um i mean i've i've experienced that before and it was so painful where the masculine tried to create like the the narcissistic triangle and Ooh. two women together and I'm like I'm not I'm not participating I'm withdrawing you know right. you can have him because I'm not doing that with anyone and I think women have to stop um, start to heal that wound of competitiveness because yeah. <clears throat> you know we there is no competition every woman is divine and beautiful and a queen but she has to embody that on her own. You're not, you're not competing with anyone else, you know, right. it's same with a masculine, every mm -hmm. masculine is unique and beautiful and divine. And it's his job to, you know, embody that and to activate his own inner code um, right. so that he can receive. So I'd like to hear more about how you work with men or women and what that looks like and, and some, give us some examples of how you've been able to uh, help people. Well, with women, my primary focus is working with women. One, because to be honest, women listen more easily than men do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and, well, and also I've talked about how, how really for men, it's easier for them to listen to women is to listen to other men in some ways. 
You know, unless a man's really willing to be subservient in the sense of like to yield everything to another man, which is not that easy to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's easier to trust a woman to guide us and give us feedback than it's to go to another Mm -hmm. man unless you really deeply honor and respect him. Thankfully, the male teachers I've had have been Mm -hmm. such honorable men. I had no problem at all, like trusting and opening up to them. So, so I tend to work with women because women, um, well, it's like, when I, there's two things that comes up. One is because I have a great compassion for women. Because I've, for over the, since my teenage years, I've always had a shoulder for women to cry on because that's the way I was in school. Mm. So it's innate in me to have that safe space. The second part is that really, from well, three three things. The second part is being now passionate about being in a masculine place and embodying what I'm about, living my purpose and my calling. Mm-hmm. I, I I model without intending, but I model for the women what sort of man they want to have the energy mm. around because they can feel that safe place. Yes. which then creates them the safe place because they can then move into a feminine place more easily because when they're out of alignment, they don't feel as in integrity when mm-hmm. I'm holding that space. And the third yeah. thing is that in the work I've done over the years, I mean, you know, I've got a master's degree in spiritual psychology. I've been a spiritual counselor for 18 years, 19, that my skill set is really how to facilitate people back to their true sense and mm-hmm. the true core. And for women, it's like, we'll talk about this a bit more about, about relationships is that women, as men do as well, tend to drag their past wounds into the next relationship without healing them. And I watch them basically repeat the cycle again and again and again. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. It's so true. And that's why shadow work is so important. Yeah. Um, you know, really facing the darkness, the, the pain, um, honoring the pain, and, and really having some. I really love the fact that, um, you know, like you're a masculine that's supporting the feminine. It's so important to have this role because women need to know how it feels to be supported because if they didn't have that supportive, strong father figure growing up or Mm -hmm. healthy example, um, in healing, we always say you have to know how it feels because frankly, um, many many people you know have never known how it feels to feel safe Mm -hmm. with the opposite sex right so when you learn how it feels then you can start to mimic that or replicate that and then you have a template without that template it's very difficult to uh, create so you need a template to create any reality and that template has to be learned experienced felt and understood so i really think that's really incredible and awesome that you are that support for feminine so that they can lean on and talk to and to know that it's safe to talk to a masculine that um that there are men that listen that there are men that care you know (laughs) and i'm not i'm not trying to be generalist or anything but you know we're just talking about we're really leaving a lot of the old paradigms of like oh men don't care men don't understand um all of these old paradigm woundings we're trying to quantum leap into a new paradigm where we can have our needs met where we can Mm -hmm. trust where we can love freely so um i'd love to know you know how did you get into working with women and what does that look like Mm, okay Um, as I mentioned, I've basically been a safe place for women since I was, since I was a teenager, mm-hmm. basically. Um, there are different points along my path where I can sort of highlight. When I was a kid, my mother was the most, um, was a central figure in my family. Mm-hmm. So I always had deep respect and appreciation for my mother. Mm-hmm. Um, and being the firstborn, usually it's alignment to the father is kind of the archetype. But for me, mm-hmm. she was my go-to. One, because mm-hmm. we, were, we had a role of rapport. But secondly, she was the safest place in the house. So I always went with that. Mm-hmm. Then in in um, in in England, it was basically my teen early teenage years at school. So that would be, I think, middle school, mm-hmm. I think, or maybe high school. Um, for the American audience, that from basically from age twelve to about sixteen, twelve mm-hmm. to seven, twelve six seventeen, I was bullied by a lot of the boys at school. Oh wow! Very, various reasons be, be, one because well the reason was because I, one I was Jewish so I was one of the few mm-hmm. Jewish kids in the whole school mm-hmm. so that was a minority and so I got pushed around wow. and second and second I didn't I didn't the thing I didn't do is I didn't I didn't fight back I turned the other cheek basically I was like um okay you guys whatever because mm-hmm. I was outnumbered and I didn't do anything about it if I mm-hmm. you know in hindsight maybe it was yeah. different but the reality was I didn't 
But then again, I look back and go, if it hadn't been for that, I wouldn't have been on this path for so long and be so mm. passionate about being compassionate, caring, and, and a wonderful That's person. True. Because if I didn't have the wound of that, I mm-hmm. wouldn't have sought it, I wouldn't have sought any healing. It's so true. I love that how um so you know, people that go through these get you know pushed up against in different ways and they, they come up against obstacles and pain turn around and use their pain to be of service because that also creates this level of compassion. So you know how it feels and you're like, right. I'm not going to let that happen. I want people, I want people to feel good. I want people to be happy, to be loved. Um, that's part of, uh, that's part of the wounded healer, but also that's how we step into mastery is when we realize oh, yeah. that our, our, our pain is actually part of our purpose. And then when we step into our purpose. We're helping so many others. It's beautiful. Thanks. So also during the same time in high school, um, because the boys, I didn't feel safe around because of getting beaten up by them mm-hmm. is that the only, the only friends I really had were the girls. Mm-hmm. And, and so it was almost like a safe haven in a sense. I mean, I wasn't dating in them. This is my teenagers mm-hmm. looking at dating at the time, but the girls were where I was, I became one, I became safe amongst them, but they became safe with me, but they would trust me. So I became mm-hmm. the confidant mm-hmm. and I'd be the person they would lean on because they would talk about their you know, dating woes. Mm-hmm. Not that I could fix them. I didn't have the mm-hmm. skills. But at least I was a guy they could lean on. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. was kind of what happened then. So it's been innate in me for many years since that point. Every mm-hmm. time, you know, I've, unfortunately, my dating life sometimes got more sporadic because a woman who felt upset would lean on me as a friend and we'd never date. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so I had some beautiful people, women in my life who were really dear friends of mine um, because of the fact they trusted me and I, and I was a safe place for them. So it's always been in me, but I didn't I did the masculine family work. I didn't really understand how it worked for me mm-hmm. and also how much more powerful I can step into that place, mm. you know, and that's the thing for me is that wounded place really has shown up in different ways along the, my path as teaching points for myself mm-hmm. <clears throat> and a safety of, of um, compassion for other people, as you mentioned. So yes, mm-hmm. it's played out as a beautiful gift that had I not had that experience, I'm not sure I would have been where I am now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, I would love for you, for you to give some thoughts and advice to men as well. Maybe some, I know that you work mostly with women, but as a masculine, mm-hmm. you are, have a unique perspective where you are in the shoes of, of the masculine and mm-hmm. understanding that most men take their woundedness and shield or deflect or project, but are not in a place where they can receive that love because you know a lot of men have that um the knight's guard on you know like the 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 knight you know the armor Mm -hmm. and um you know there's a beautiful woman that wants to love them but they're unable to actually receive because they've been wounded and so now and so they they get angry but they have to take off their armor before they can receive and i think many men don't know how to or if it's safe to um or they well actually sometimes they may not even know they're wearing it that's the biggest mm, part wow okay because because yes. it started very young because again mm-hmm. so to, to to speak to that directly because i really feel partly my own path but also men i've watched over the years too is that for us as men we don't always know it's safe to come out from behind the shielding the, the walls mm-hmm. we have up and we think that's part of who we are Mm-hmm. You know, we we are we are. It's funny. You know, I went and saw um, uh, Avengers Endgame. So we were we were like Iron Man. We had the mm-hmm. we had the casing on to protect ourselves, mm-hmm. but we couldn't separate ourselves from it. Mm-hmm. And so we don't even know we're wearing it. And so part of, first, it's becoming aware is that hang on a second, I'm I'm not so much numb, but I'm just protected from feeling anything in the world because it's not safe to do so. Mm-hmm. And that a lot of times called my shadow work is that younger belief, some programming happened when we were younger. Mm. Well, we did get wounded or feel unsafe. So we put the walls up to protect ourselves. Mm-hmm. But the problem is we've had them up so long, we forgot they're there. Wow. That's an amazing analogy. And also the Iron Man, you think about it, everyone looks up to Iron Man, but really Iron Man is shielded. <laughs> and he gets his power from being shielded. But, you know, what is that teaching boys and men that when you wear your shield, you're invisible? But mm-hmm. then they cry because they don't get the love they truly desire. Like they're missing out on the most important thing in their life, which is to receive this gorgeous love. And, um, you know, a lot of women come to me telling me like, 
he can't, he doesn't like receive me. They don't feel received. Mm -hmm. And so they, ha so then they end up having to leave. And um, that, that's sort of a pattern. So how do we break these patterns of pain? Because it's both, it goes back and forth, feminine. And right. masculine. It's all reflected because when the masculine's wearing his armor, the woman is stopped in her tracks and she's like, mm -hmm. I keep trying to give you, but there's nowhere to go with it. So I have no choice but to walk away. Um, you know, so how, what advice would you give to the men and women in that situation? Well, first of all, um, women also wear armor at times too, just to be mm -hmm. honest. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but for men, um, it is that sense of recognizing one that we do carry walls between us and people around us. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we're wondering why we're not connecting, a lot of times it's time to look inside and see, okay, so where do we stop connecting ourselves? Mm -hmm. And this is, true, this is true for both men and women, of course, is mm -hmm. that it does come, I mean, our formative years are so informing of our adult life. We Oof. imprint yeah. very young in life. I mean, Bruce Lipton in The Biology of Belief explains this so beautifully. It's about, you know, from zero to eight, zero to five years old, we're basically like tabula rasa. We're a clean slate. We mm -hmm. have no way of... Um, seeing how the world works until we embody what we see and we take it in like a sponge. We don't have any, any focus or any, any discernment. And so if we're in an abusive environment as a kid, we think that's the way love is expressed. We will attend embodying that as an adult without even knowing why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And because we think it's natural. So it's that thing about being aware. Like, hang on a second. I'm choosing this or I'm being in this. Why? Mm -hmm. And look back and see what's causing it. So whether it's armor or abuse or wounding or some other part of ourselves that we hide, <clears throat> It's willing to, willing to go back and look. Mm -hmm. And yes, the shadow work is about looking back at our younger self and seeing where the wounds were, were um, impacted so we can take mm -hmm. them out and heal them. Yeah, that's so important. Yeah, we, we're uh, totally open as children and we get completely programmed on how right. we're going to play our entire life out. So, you know, many times people aren't conscious of... Um, the parenting aspect and how important that is then they're you know the wounding travels generation to generation you know mm -hmm. in shamanism we say seven generations of imprints yeah <laughs> that pain travels generation to generation and it is our responsibility individually to start cleaning that up you know and i think that's the place to start is with ourselves because yeah what's showing up is often a reflection of what's going on internally as well, you know? Oh, almost always that always. way. Yeah. yeah. And so like you, you know, people want to blame each other and the truth is, wait a minute, Hey, let's all step back and let's look at ourselves. Let's mm -hmm. get the nurturing and help that we need. It's not, doesn't make you weak. It makes you very strong yeah. to get help. Um, you know, we live in a society that's, like everyone should just be perfect and smiling all the time. And, um, you know, we don't want to talk about the darker stuff, the, the right. what's underneath the rug, but that's where it all festers. And if you don't go and clean into the rug, it's going to be a disaster. So it's, Basically, yes. <laughs> yeah. So the work we do individually, um, is so important, you know, getting the coaching you need and getting the support you need learning how it feels to be loved. Um, don't weigh all that onto a partner because right. if you come into a relationship and you, your needs have never been met mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and you're coming in expecting this person to fulfill all your needs, you're in big trouble because even if they are quote unquote, the person, perfect person for you, the amount that you're asking them from them will take away from the joy of the relationship because how can you have fun and be light and playful when you're like i need all my needs met from you being my mom to you being this and you being that or you being my dad it's just like that's a lot Impossible. to ask of one yeah. person nobody can be all that all the time sorry yep there's <laughs> <laughs> a dose of reality there yeah absolutely yeah. it's impossible but it's yeah, so Oh, I'm sorry, you. go ahead. I was just going to ask you, do you find, you know, in the work you do, I'm just so curious, do you find that a lot of the wounding or the healing people need are from the parental relationships? Like, for example, you know, are people playing out the same relationship patterns they had with their mother, father, 
um, in their romantic relationships? Or what is the biggest thing that's coming up, you know? Um, in the history that we're cleaning up past wounds, it will tend, the, the signposts are really looking back at past relationships and seeing the common threads. Mm -hmm. Because we're the common denominator in every relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we notice that in every single relationship there was a big argument or every single relationship there was, um, you know, the other person like was always working, was never around, mm -hmm. that's a clue. And if you, if you look back far enough, generally speaking, I, would, I mean, I would say 100% of the case, but I would be, no, I can't prove that, but I believe mm -hmm. a large proportion is that we are imprinted at a young age by what we see in our parents' relationship. Not always the relationship with us from them, mm -hmm. but with each other. They, it's almost like they're a stage play. Mm -hmm. they're showing us on the screen what relationship should look like and then we think oh that must be the way it is yeah. <laughs> and then we put it in you know um just to use the example from my personal life i i would say that i had a very wonderful upbringing you know my mm -hmm. parents were together my mom passed away in 2012 after 60 years of marriage mm -hmm. wow. so that was a powerful relationship yes. but the thing is my early dating life in my teens and 20s the my dates my my relationships would last maybe three months maybe mm -hmm. maybe two three months mm -hmm. every single one of them would end because we get into an argument and i'd leave mm -hmm. and what i realized when i look back thankfully with hindsight was when i was a kid i noticed that you know, growing up in my family there were never any arguments my parents never argued and what i had discovered was the wiring i'd taken on is i believe that arguments and love don't go together because according to my parents paradigm they never argue in front of the kids Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what an argument, how that fits in relationships. So every time I had a relationship, I had an argument, the love must be over. I was going to leave. Wow, that's powerful. So that's even though it was a wonderful upbringing, it impacted my relationships negatively because I would end them every time there's an argument. I didn't know that wow. an argument was part of the growth mm -hmm. and part of the resolution. So, and of course, the joke I say is, you know, if, I, if I'd known about makeup sex, I never would have left. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. I, mean, I think there's something to be said about... Um, that you know you don't want your relationship to be all, all arguing but you know actually arguing and working things out can actually improve your relationship because the problem solving together builds momentum it builds intimacy trust bonding that actually you can't be very close to somebody if you don't argue with them because the i guess the truth is can if we if we go th through this can we still be together can we still right. go through this can i still trust you can you still trust me can do we have the power to work this out right not saying arguments are required for relationships no. to be clear no. but having that having that range of spectrum where you can yes. have upset feelings or work through stuff because i mean awakened mm -hmm. people in relationship will have differences of opinion they won't necessarily resort to arguing because arguing mm -hmm. comes from a very low level yeah but if you get to see well, hang on a second, we're solely off track here. How do we get back mm -hmm. to being together? Mm -hmm. That can be a very conscious way of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying like, and I'm not saying uh, like arguing or starting fights is good or I'm not promoting <laughs> that, but, but good. Like, no matter who, it's like you could have a sister or brother, you know, arguing, we're not going to agree on everything and, and it's okay to agree to disagree on yeah. some things. Like, you know, that's, that's a test to me. Like you have to be able to be able to go through a few things and be like, okay, we're still on solid ground. Let's keep moving forward. Um, because nothing is quote unquote perfect. And I think, you know, you come from a very unusual background. I mean, I don't meet many people whose a parents have made it through 60 years mm -hmm. and also, um, not argued. <laughs> <laughs> And the truth is, but also the thing about that is, I mean, I'm grateful for that. But also, I'm very clear my parents weren't awake. They weren't aware. Mm -hmm. They was, I mean, I, I mean, I look back now and looking and going, yeah, they didn't move beyond that safety net. It was very still mm -hmm. codependent. It was a very codependent model. Mm -hmm. You know, breadwinner, stay at home, couldn't live without each other, that mm -hmm. framework. So I've done the work I've done now. I couldn't go back to that framework. But I mm -hmm. do appreciate having that stability because that was yeah. a rarity. I didn't, I, mean, realize until, I didn't realize until afterwards how much that was a rarity. Yeah. You know, I, was, I, I remember back when I came out to the States, I was in a seminar way back when I first started doing this work. It was a children's seminar I was, I was assisting at, and there were probably 60 kids in there, like from five to nine years old. Mm -hmm. And the facilitator said, okay, how many kids by show of hands come from, uh, their parents have been divorced? Mm -hmm. And over half the kids put their hands up, of course, because I didn't realize that was mm -hmm. the case. Mm -hmm. And so recognize that what I, what I come from, I'm very humbled and grateful to know that my parents had that long relationship. Mm -hmm. That 
I didn't have any clue how to compete with that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I definitely look at the framework and just, you know, it's just like I had the challenge of one side and then the joy of the other side. So just recognizing it's just both were in there, Yeah. you know? Yeah. It's, it's amazing how, um, it's, that's a beautiful thing. I, I think that's such a beautiful thing that you came from a home that was stable. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people do not have that. And, you know, in America, divorce is such a big thing here. Oh, yeah. It's like, I, you know, I didn't want to go through any divorces. So I was like, I'm not going to get married. <laughs> that, that way I don't have to get right. divorced. I'll just solve that problem right now. You know? It's, it's like you don't want to uh, get in a car crash so I don't learn to drive. Yeah, exactly. But then that's <laughs> not really, you know, that's not, that's not it either, you know? So... Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I would be open to marriage if the, if the time came, but, um, but I think that, but I had to work through a lot of the beliefs around my parents getting divorced and that like relationships right. are disasters and that they're dangerous and, you know, um, work through a lot of my shadows and wounding around that. Cause you know, I think it's very traumatic when your parents get divorced and when there's that separation and trauma, um, and so, you know, most people are carrying such heavy baggage from their childhood. And like, at mm -hmm. some point, you're going to have to relieve yourself from that baggage, or you're just going to keep replaying it over and over. And that's not any fun at all. No, no. no. It's, uh, it's, it's familiar. It's, it's, it's familiar, but familiar is dangerous sometimes because mm -hmm. um, there's a fine line of like familiar and then wanting to make a quantum leap and i think we're all coming to the edge a lot of us are coming to the edge where we're like we you know we want to create a different patterning different yeah. understanding of love of what that means of what romantic love means um you know a lot of the work i've been drawn to do as a wounded healer has been around heart chakra healing because mm -hmm every because i was doing sessions and sessions but every time it would start with people's heart we were carrying resentments and so um a lot of the stuff is you got to clear your resentments first towards the first love of your life which is mm -hmm. your parental figures right you need to heal from that and then once you start to release and clear and forgive or whatever that is for your, for each person then you can move forward and start to make more conscious choices, you know? So, um, like what are some of the things that you work on with women or what are some of the things that come up like that are patterns that you'd like to bring forward in this conversation for listeners? Well, there's so much to open up to. <laughs> <I know>. Um, <laughs> a, a large part of this is really looking at your parents' relationship. But there's so many different paradigms because there's, mm -hmm. there's addictions, there's abuse, there's neglect, mm -hmm. there's abandonment, there's, um, there's cheating, there's all these different mm -hmm. things that happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's more about just being aware of the fact that what you are doing in your adult relationships quite often is influenced by what happened to your parents mm -hmm. or happened, what happened between your parents. So mm -hmm. if, if there were certain wounds they showed and you can look back and hopefully see if they clearly what happened, although some people it's been buried so deep they've got to do some mm -hmm. excavation. When you look mm -hmm. back and see what your parents did, then as an adult, you can go, hang on a second, I'm doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I can check, because the thing about it is the first step towards changing is awareness. Yeah, so much. So, so if you can become aware of like, hang on a second, I keep doing this. So it's <laughs> not so much like I'm out of control, like mm -hmm. it's not me, it's like I'm doing it because I learned that's the way to do it. Because again, as children, we associate what we experience with our parents with love and go, that's the way love needs to be expressed. Yeah. So again, if you were in a parent relationship where, your, one of your parents cheated on the other parent. As an adult, you might find yourself in relationships where either you cheat on your partners or mm -hmm. your partners cheat on you. And it may not necessarily be romantically. It might be they do cheat on their taxes or mm -hmm. you, cheat, you cheat on something else to continue that association between the pattern and love because mm -hmm. that's, that's the wiring we have. And so it's a matter of really yes. becoming aware of it first and yeah. then looking back to see where it started and then changing the wiring. Yes, going back to the root. So important, yeah. we, you know, but so much of the healing work is really identifying the root and the core. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we were going to talk about um, how people just jump from one relationship to the next. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. That rebound experience. Yes. <laughs> the rebound experience <laughs> that like, you know, it seems like a great and easy answer that when you get hurt, you got to just jump off to the next one to ease that heart. But 
how, tell us about that and how does that work out? <laughs> Well, that's the whole point. You just said it's like it's just simply to avoid the hurt. The, mm -hmm. the, we, as human beings, we tend to avoid pain. Yeah. So unless you're into, unless you're into, like say the masochism, that's not the story. Mm -hmm. but, if, but generally speaking, we don't like being in pain. Yeah. So generally speaking, un unless we know there's a way to undo the pain, mm -hmm. then we'll do something to avoid it, which is move to the next relationship. So the mm -hmm. the rebound relationship, the cycling through relationships, is not unusual because people oftentimes don't want to look at the, the, the baggage or the pain mm -hmm. or the wreckage of the past relationship, go, okay, yeah. I'm done, next. And so it's that understanding that we can stop that cycle if we choose to. Mm -hmm. and, and also the other part is, is that when we look back really, when we discover the pain is nowhere near as bad as we thought it was. Mm -hmm. But it wow. does require courage to see that because again, oh, yes. well, it's, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the, the um, like you don't look in the closet because it's dark and there might be a monster in there, mm -hmm. but it might because you hear a noise, but it might be it might be a mouse. It's that sense of scale that we we, we blow things out of proportion mm -hmm. because we, we don't because we don't even look at it, see how real it you know. Because mm -hmm. when you look at me clearly, you go, oh, it's only this big. Yeah, but in our mind, it would made it this big because you're avoiding it. When we're avoiding right. something, it sort of trails you. I think that's why. Um, oh, it does. Yeah. Stop. Turn around and look. And um, I, I started to do that in my dreams. Like, you know, for so many years, I used to have nightmares since I was a little mm. girl, really bad nightmares. And I was always running from monsters and things like that. And so at some point I said, enough is enough. And I remember stopping, taking a deep breath and turning around and saying no more. Mm -hmm. And the monsters disappeared. I got, didn't get any more nightmares, you know, and I had nightmares for years, like really, really intense ones. And facing the monster is so important because it's never what you think it is, you know? Right. Um, in shamanism, you know, we, yeah, we face like the demons too and, and like, or, or energies, energies, like, um, part of the initiations is facing darkness or like, or like facing the dragon. Um, and then you just face it and then it dissolves, it actually dissolves into you. It does, cannot really truly consume you or, or right. destroy you. You actually get your power from facing it. Directly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's the thing is a lot of people have so much of their power, um, not much tied up in, but held hostage by those apparent monsters. Mm -hmm. Invisible so monsters, you, yeah. Yeah, so if we are looking to have an amazing relationship, but 90% of our energy and our, and our power is tied up in our closet of fears and doubts and worries in the background, we mm. can't fully express it with a partner. No. So no. absolutely, it's, it's, it's part of the work. To be fully able to embrace a relationship, you've got to be fully available to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you've got to, again, look at, look at the darkness and the shadow. Yeah, to do the work, to heal those wounds from the past may sound like, oh, I can't do that, it's too scary, it's too much. Mm -hmm. But when we start to look at it and really see clearly what's going on, we have more compassion, more empathy, mm -hmm. and more support for ourselves going forward. Absolutely. So, you know, so it's vital that we have that place of, um, we have that place of understanding that it's, one, it's, one, it's possible, mm -hmm. and secondly, it's, it's actually achievable in an easier way that we can say yes to it mm -hmm. and move through it in a healthy way. That's so beautiful. It really helps to have a guide um, sometimes because, you know, we want to think we can do it all ourselves. But even oh, great yeah. athletes and people that are top pros in any field are yeah. never too big to get help and support. If you mm -hmm. want to go big, if you want to have a, you know, have that powerful love, sometimes you're going to need to get healing. Sometimes you're going to need to get support. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, finding the right person, you know, feeling energetically attuned to the person, if their message resonates yeah. with you, that's the most important thing. And um, so, yeah, I, I really love what you're saying, you know, and also th there is that disaster, people going from one to the one to the one, and, and you see the same pattern. And I always say mm -hmm. it's really embarrassing on social media when people do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they have like their new movie, like they have, they're like, I found the love of my life. And then, like, Did you say that six oh. months ago? Yeah, that was like, <laughs> and then it was like two weeks into the relationship. And then yeah. they're flaunting their new person. And then 
you know, six months later, it's like done. And then they have their new person now, like, and now I found the other greatest love of my life. And you're like, oh my gosh, like, I don't even, I can't, this is just, oh, like, I mean, come on, like, you're not going to find the love of your life in a nanosecond. Like, love takes time to develop. You don't just, right. I don't know, I mean, I admire them for, for blasting it out there, but holy <laughs> moly, that's, that's not something you'll ever see me do. I mean, no. because it takes, you know, I, I always said, like, listen, I, until I get married, I'm never going to be putting someone on blast on my social media. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, you know, you're just, no, because, you know, you have to have that commitment. Pictures are forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? Social> <laughs> yeah. <True. laughs> but, but then you always see, you see people doing that and you're like, gosh, I'm seeing a pattern here. I'm not trying to be judgmental, but I might, I might just, hey, take a little time off, do some inner healing work. If you need some coaching, reach out. Um, yeah. We got amazing people like Barry or, you know, myself. We're, there's so many people that you can turn to, but get the support that you need. You don't have to just run off to the next one because I guarantee you, if that's what you've been doing, that's what you're going to continue. Right. Yeah. And then you're going to wonder why me? And it's like, yeah, it's not why you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is why you, because it's like yeah, you created it. <laughs> you, because you're the, you're the creator of your own destiny and you're creating yeah. trauma. Actually it's creating trauma over and over again. And you see that right. like how people create trauma. Well, this, people, the, Mm -hmm. well, so there's, a quote, there's a quote from way back I remember saying which is basically is you know if you always do what you've always done you're always, you're always going to get what you've always gotten exactly and, and, you know so it's so true and that's and it's that wiring so you think well I'll do it again I'll try something different it's like you've got to be different to be actually mm -hmm. get something different so yeah. if you really want to change you've got to be willing to change and then get the help to change I mean it sounds so obvious to say it that way like, but just do it like it's so awesome I love seeing people have breakthroughs I love seeing people mm -hmm. I believe in love. I'm an advocate. I, I really love, and I still believe in marriage. I know a lot of people do not believe in it. Right. I have never been married, but I very much believe in it. And that's why I take it very seriously. Like, mm -hmm. cause I never want to get divorced. So I, <laughs> there you go. I'm going to wait till I'm 70, <laughs> 77, <laughs> 80, 90. Sounds like a good time, but no, I'm kidding. Um, just yeah i just i think that it's a beautiful thing i celebrate people that find love and and when you have that beautiful relationship and um i see a lot of beautiful married couples sharing mm -hmm. and i think that's gorgeous i'm definitely not knocking anybody that shares their enthusiasm but i'm just saying a lot of times you see people cycling through people and you're like ooh, ooh. it's kind of yep and you want to be like what happened <laughs> 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 it is kind of the, the relationship du jour. It is, does change that frequently. And I mean, and I know, I know some people have gone through like three, four marriages, you know, it's because mm -hmm. the thing is, the other thing is also, uh, I do know some people who were marriage is their default state. So if they get divorced, they're going to get married again mm -hmm. because they don't feel, and this is speaking back to the other thing about serial mm -hmm. relationships is some people are afraid to be single. Mm -hmm. They don't even know how to be with themselves, which is a very big clue that maybe there's something to do there. Because they're always like, I need to go find someone to be immersed with because then I put my mm -hmm. attention on them, not yes. on me. Yes, yes. yes. So that makes so much know. sense. You know, um, a lot of times, like, we're taught to give everything to our relationships and to be a service. And especially women, we're like, um, earlier on, I saw that patterning within myself where I was like, I wanted to just give my power to the masculine and just be, you know, yeah. Um, sort of that prototype, the princess prototype, and um, that prototype never worked. And I really discourage that prototype because it's something that we're taught in our culture in our fairy tale books. Mm -hmm. Sleeping Beauty, just be beautiful, oh, yeah. but be asleep. And that's like literally, <laughs> figuratively, like you got to get woke if you want to have an incredible relationship. Both you need to get woke, and right. no Sleeping Beauty. Okay. Um, no Rapunzel, you're not going to climb up my hair to come see me. Okay. But like, no, no, no. I have a whole chapter in my book about it and I go oh, oh, yeah. on fairy tales. Cause I'm like, are you kidding? These fairy tales are like toxicity for kids. It's just horrible. So well, not, not only that, but also the last 60 years of love songs. Oh, 
Yeah. They also, you know, I can't live without you. You know, I'll die if you mm-hmm. leave. I mean, how how special is that? <laughs> That's not good. Like, you know? how about like I consciously choose you and you consciously choose me? Like, you know, what a concept. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear some conscious love songs. Can anybody out there do that, please? There are there are some love songs. There are some songs out there that are conscious, but they're really? few far between. Yeah, yeah I know. But, but, you, them on the radio. <laughs> but, but the thing is, you have to remember also we we are enmeshed in have been you know been in this journey of a very codependent culture for many, many years. Yes. So the love songs, movies, you know, Jerry Maguire was saying, you complete me. It's that sense of like, we can't, according to their system, be whole on our own unless we're with somebody else, which is an illusion. It's a lie. We are whole beings. Yes, yes, yes. Get it together. You're a whole piece of fruit. (laughs) 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 You wonderful fruit salad. (laughs) There you go. I know it's like no one is gonna no one is going to complete you let that be a public announcement you complete right. yourself and then you then you take your time to enjoy your life do what's right for you work on your goals and your dreams and then your beloved will step into that reality because yes. they're going to be complete you know period no one we're not going to hang off each other like dead weight okay it's not going to happen <laughs> Absolutely. No, if we're going to have together, it's build. We've got to build, you know? Yeah. So, um, what, so I want you to speak to, to the women and men listening, because I we, we have both in our audience. Um, mm-hmm. I'd love you to just speak to the men for a minute, and then you can speak to the women, because the men need support too. Trust me, they yes. really do. Yeah, you guys... So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so men, men in general, again, I said this earlier that we do wear armor, we're, we're shielding. So for mm-hmm. a lot of men, the willingness to take off that shielding is the first step towards healing. Mm-hmm. And so for us, that was the journey I went through. I mean, my, my armor got shattered pretty young when I was bullied and then it happened a few other times oh. where I kept rebuilding it. So it became like a patchwork quilt for me. Oh, wow. But thankfully I found some teachings and some, uh, some immersion journeys that really transformed my life that really for me now made me much more whole now. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying you need to do my path because my path took a long time because I'm a slow learner. Mm-hmm. Um, but for men out there, definitely to really be willing to face their own demons, to be willing mm-hmm. to take down their armor and to open up and allow it to happen Ooh. because the more we can do that, the more we can receive a woman, the more we can give to a woman, mm-hmm. if that's what your preference is, mm-hmm. that can work. And mm-hmm. for women, unfortunately women have been um, emulating the same thing for so long because again, yeah. the culture was built by, well, the thing is our society, was built by men for men and women have been trying to fit in ever since. Yes. So, yes. so the framework for women a lot of times, especially when it's in business and it's in independence, women have been fiercely achieving that at the mm-hmm. price of their femininity. Yes. And so yes. learning how to actually maintain the independence mm. and have femininity together is absolutely what's it, what needs to be happening more than mm-hmm. ever in the world. Because the other, the biggest part for me is a worldview mm-hmm. is that the way we're treating the planet, the way we're treating our culture, the way we're treating mm-hmm. our society, is we're taking off a cliff very quickly. Mm-hmm. And because that's, the, that's the, the male energy driving it without any focus. Mm-hmm. The feminine energy is needed now to save our planet, basically mm. to be inclusive and additive. So ladies, we need you more than ever now than yeah. to step into your leadership. Yes. But fem, feminine leadership. Feminine leadership, yes. Thank you for saying that. That is so important and so needed. Um, you know, that's and that's part of what I'm sharing in the books I'm doing is mm-hmm. having women come forward and share their voices, their expertise. Yes. You know, find what you're passionate about because do not wait just for love to save you. Love is not going to save you. Um, right. You are love. So so that there it is. You are already love. Fill your own cup. Do not mm-hmm. wait to get a filling. You know. Fill your own <laughs> Find your own joy, find your voice, find your truth, get the support you need. Um, you know, find people like Barry who are, who are the masculine in support of the feminine, you know, um, find people who are in support of your truth, who are on your team, who are loving and compassionate, who really are devoted to serving because, you know, that's the thing is that you need to know that there are great people in the world that are here to be of service that yeah. they're on their their path their purpose their mission and it's an opportunity and i always say opportunities are just opportunities you know until you take them up and then they, they become wondrous gifts 
So mm -hmm. we have to, um, I always tell people, take up opportunities. Don't wait your whole life. This, this life goes by so fast. You've right. got to start it taking up opportunities, um, try new things, try coaching, try healing, um, you know, connect with Barry. I'll put his information below, but you know, there's just so many ways we're here to heal ourselves. We're here to heal our lineage and that in turn heals the world. So yeah. many people are so focused on what's going on out there. And it's like, yes, we have to stand up for what's right. We have to say no to big corporations and things that are hurting yes. us but most of the work the main job you have in your life hello yeah. exactly here, <laughs> well the thing is and also but that's the other part too is that we have also been externalizing all the power all the effort all the strength yeah you're just pushing are, it out there we're sourced inside and when we yeah. remember that we can change things that's that's it. That's yeah. the gist of it. There's your lesson for today, kids. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. We love you. It was, um, it was easy. It was so much fun to talk to you. Uh, I really I like love it. when I love the opportunity to talk to divine masculines that because your voices are so needed. I really mm -hmm. love that. And you know, I always ask men to come on my show, but you know they're shy, and I'm like, no. They are? Your voices are, a lot of men don't feel ready to speak their truth. Mm. So, <clears throat> you know, um, thank you for standing for the feminine. Thank you for, for being that, you know, you're a template, you're an energy template, putting that healing frequency out into the world. Every time we stand for something, whether we know it or not, we're creating ripples around the world. Yes. We're creating a new template. The new world is created through us. We are the conduits and we have to know we have that kind of power. So thank you for your oh. beautiful work. Thank, thank you. you my pleasure. On. Thanks for having really me. Fun conversation. I enjoyed it. And I hope you guys learned something. If you want to connect with Barry, I'll put his information below until then much love and many blessings. Mwah. Bye. Bye. -bye.